For Creamer Media's Policy, I'm Sashni Mudli. Researcher and analyst Professor Raymond Satna joins me to discuss securing Ramaphosa's presidency, but at what cost? Welcome, Raymond. Thank you very much. Now, you start off your column by saying that the expectations that many had of um, Ramaphosa's presidency were not necessarily, necessarily realistic. Why? Well, you know, when you come out of a long nightmarish night and someone says they're going to start on a new dawn, you really hope this is true. You want it to be true. You long for it to be true because it was so terrible, even mm. more terrible than we realized under Zuma because this thing of the blackouts that we're having now, this is to do with the Guptas and coal and a whole lot of other things related to that period. Um, the economy as a whole is just, uh, you know, people rejoice uh, when we get, we don't even get back to where we were about a year ago mm. uh, because things were so bad. And Ramaphosa, uh, what business wants, they don't want ideology. They want a sense of certainty that and regularity so that if they invest, that they know that it will not be disrupted by instability in the political arena. Mm -hmm. Now, the way Ramaphosa presented himself was polished, clear, all these things. And, but that was juxtaposed with a situation where his own position was not secure. Mm -hmm. And I thought that he could have secured his position over time and neutralized many of the people who were opposed to him. But I think it was easy to underrate the level of determination on the side of those who supported Zuma and benefited from Zuma to fight back, even to the point of trying to remove Ramaphosa from office. So in some ways, the expectations were uh, hopes, wishes, dreams, and they were not based on everything that was going to be at play. Not everything was, was obvious and clear. And you also say um, in your column that the support for and against Ramaphosa um, is more or less evenly matched. How so? Well, from the time when he was elected, it was by 195 votes or something like that. And in the top six of the NEC, <coughs> it's three who support him, three who don't support him. Uh, I believe in the national executive that is a little bit more favorable to him, but in the national working committee, I don't know if it's accurate, but that he has a lot of difficulty winning his positions. And this may account for this <coughs> one step forward, one step backwards way in which he's acting, the reasons why he's keeping some people in cabinet mm. and things like this. Uh, my feeling is that when you have a situation like that, uh, the people who are opposed to you are emboldened if you're too cautious. Mm. You have to sometimes be bold mm. and risk losing your position. Now, I think Everyone is, who supports Ramaphosa believes that keeping Ramaphosa there is the main thing and that he plays the long game and all this sort of thing and we must just wait. But the problem with all of that is it's not just the ANC is waiting, the country is being held to ransom. Mm. So I think things, I don't know the balance of forces, but it seems that uh, there's a lot of compromise that has been made. I'm not against compromises. I think that sometimes you have to do one thing that you don't want to do in order to achieve something bigger. But having Ramaphosa as president is for a reason. It's not just to have him there. Mm. And if he can't do what we have him there for, then we have to ask at a certain point, what are we paying for this? I'm not saying we've reached that point, 
but this principle of yeah, just wait, be patient, all this, keep these dead wood, who we're paying millions for. So is um, his, uh, is the support against him one of the main reasons why he's not getting rid of discredited cabinet members? I think so. Um, I think so. I think that he wants he to keep the ANC in a stable condition and he may fear that if he gets rid of these people, I can't see why, because I don't think the people in the cabinet who should, in my view, not be there, carry so much weight that mm. they have, don't think they have such huge constituencies. Mm. So I believe he could get rid of more people. He may be thinking, well, let's do it the way Kigaba went through legal processes and things like that. And it's costing a lot in between. And lastly, you write that the support for Ramaphosa cannot be unconditional. Why do you say this? Well, I have tried to be constructive in relation to Ramaphosa. I've tried to be constructive because I support the cleanup, I support the restoration of the rule of law, um, and I want to see recovery of state assets that have been looted. Now, I have other things that I also would like to see, a certain emancipatory vision, uh, a conception of freedom and all those things. Now, he doesn't really speak that language, but at the level of the minimal conditions of cleaning up, when you keep in your cabinet people who prima facie have got very strong cases against them, uh, allegations of corruption, or people who have messed up state institutions in a big way, uh, that uh, can't continue indefinitely. People say, let's wait till after the elections. Then others, like Carol Payton yesterday, say, it'll become more difficult after the elections because there's a national general council coming. Mm. So if you are supporting someone on the basis of a cleanup, but they're keeping people there, whose whole record should put them in jail, um, then it becomes a problem. So I'm saying the condition is that he does certain things, achieves certain things, but others will say, but who else can do it and all that. Uh, I don't have to answer that question, but I'm saying I don't unreservedly, unconditionally, no matter what, I'm not going to die to just keep one particular individual in a position. I want that person in a position, if they do certain things, they're less than I want, but they are what we need at least for a, as a country. Thanks for speaking with us, Professor. Thank you. That was Professor Raymond Sutner speaking to Cremor Media's policy about securing Ramaphosa's presidency, but at what cost?